Propellers are so integral to our lives that when we hear the word propulsion, it's hard to think of anything but a spinning propeller. But is this the best way? Few things in nature actually move with propellers, apart from some microscopic cells and tree seeds. So it's not surprising that the long and fascinating development of propellers is now looking to copy how some other animals get around. The propellers in this video mimic one of the most energy efficient movers in the world, the jellyfish. What? I know, I wasn't expecting them to come out on top either, but more on that later. For this video, I travelled to Metstrad in Amsterdam to see if I could get my hands on one of these new types of propellers that's not a spinning propeller, but a membrane propulsion system inspired by the sea jelly. I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Zero Deep Dive. There are thousands of species of jellyfish or sea jellies, and they predate dinosaurs by nearly 300 million years, so they've had a long time to perfect their graceful movements. So before going into how these two new bionic propulsion systems work, it's first interesting to understand how jellyfish move. But if you want to skip ahead to the aqua jelly or the finesse systems, you can use the video sections visible in the video timeline. Jellyfish move through the water using an efficient method of low pressure zones and vortices. Their movement begins with bell contraction, where muscles along the margin of their bell shaped body contract, forcing water out and generating a jet like thrust that propels them forward. This action forms a vortex ring, which is a circular water current at the edge of the bell that enhances propulsion. As the jellyfish relaxes the bell, it passively returns to its original shape, creating a low pressure zone beneath it. This low pressure area pulls surrounding water inwards, generating another vortex that assists in forward movement further with minimal effort. I found this incredible simulation that shows the high and low pressure areas and vortices moving around as the jellyfish glides through the water. The colours here represent velocity, so even though the vortices are red and blue, they both indicate low pressure zones. Through what is called passive energy recapture, those low pressure areas and vortices underneath the relaxing jellyfish push it along with no additional effort. This self-sustaining cycle of contraction and relaxation enables jellyfish to move efficiently through the water, conserving energy whilst covering long distances. There is a great piece of research which compares something they call the cost of transport for all kinds of creatures. It essentially measures how much energy is used to move a certain distance accounting for the weight of the animal. And in a study of thousands of running, flying and swimming creatures, the moon jellyfish came out on top, with an exceptional energy efficiency rating. It's easy to see why engineers would want to copy something in nature that has such an incredibly low cost of transport. The first thing we're going to see in this video is how the robotics legends over at Festo have put this into an aquatic robot. It uses the same vortex creation principles as the sea jelly, producing vortices during its swimming cycle. However, instead of contracting a bell-shaped body, it uses eight tentacles that are in a circular pattern. Later, we'll also look at the more recent Finesse, a propulsion system for boats with a jellyfish-inspired membrane that creates directional waves to propel boats. Festo's robot is called the Aqua Jelly, and it's powered by a lithium-ion battery the same size as the one in this iPhone. Each aqua jelly is about the size of a basketball and is intended to swim in a swarm, presumably so it doesn't get lonely, using infrared sensors to prevent collisions. The central unit contains a small electric motor and gearing system to push the clever armature of the robot up and down the guiding shafts, resulting in this mesmerizing motion. The way that aqua jellies activate their individual tentacles through the bending action leads to all eight arms making a simultaneous wave motion. This produces a peristaltic forward motion similar to that of their biological role model. Peristaltic motion is often used to describe how things are forced through our intestines, kind of like a Mexican wave. There are a lot of very graphic animations of this, but here is one that I found that's not making me queasy and gives you a good idea of the principle. 
This motion in the aqua jelly is what creates the vortices and jets for forward propulsion. To change direction, the servo motors inside the central unit control a big weight that shifts around the jelly's center of mass, which causes it to turn or rotate. The main purpose of these aqua jellies are to use swarm intelligence to allow low energy, mobile sensors to be deployed in water systems to monitor things like temperature and toxicity levels. Although this tentacle propulsion is super efficient, the thrust is very low and won't be moving much around anytime soon. Before moving on to the next propulsion system, I do want to mention that the material used to make these tentacles has also found another use. The tentacles are made from Festo's fin ray technology that is inspired by fish scales and is now being used for adaptive gripper arms in advanced robotics. Okay, the next company in the bionic propulsion space is called Finex, and they say they've developed the world's first membrane propulsion system for boats. It's called the Finess, and I went to the Metstrads trade show in Amsterdam to see if I could get my hands on one. However, when I arrived, there was a small problem. But before getting to that, here's a quick overview of the system. The Finesse is an outboard boat motor that uses a bionic-inspired membrane for better hydraulic efficiency. By pulsating in a similar way yet faster to the jellyfish, it produces a jet of water that propels the boat forward. A linear motor moves the front edge of the membrane, creating waves that travel across it. These waves then move from the intake side to the discharge side. According to Finex, who make the Fin S system, the way the waves interact with the edge helps improve propulsion by increasing pressure. So what was that small problem? Well, after many hours of travel and a sleepless night in a very loud hotel, the Fin S was nowhere to be seen. Instead, they just had a small demonstration of a pump that used the same undulating membrane. If you are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to help make that journey worth it. All jokes aside, I have to say I was impressed by the enthusiasm of their marketing manager who gave me the tour of the system when I got to the trade show. He explained the benefits of the Finesse system compared to traditional propellers due to their lack of spinning blades that reduces the issues of tangling lines and inflicting injuries. Erginia from Finesse gave me a tour of the bilge pump which uses the same technology as the propeller. Hello, my name is Eric Guillemin and I'm working on the membrane propulsion since more than 25 years. And now I will introduce you a pump with a working undulating membrane and the pump is made out of five uh, different parts. You have the inlet, the water comes in here, then you have the membrane and you have the magnet. And here you have the stator, the coil, which you have plus minus plus minus and when you put it on you have that movement with the magnet like this, which creates a wave going from the outside to the inside and pushing the water that comes out here on the top flange. And if you need a small flow rate and pressure, the size of the membrane is very small because it's 67 millimeter. But if you need a bigger uh, flow rate and pressure, then you have a different size of the membrane. And if you need uh, another bigger volume and bigger pressure, we can adapt any size of the membrane depending on the flow rate and pressure you need. Apologies for the terrible camera work there, but you can see that there wasn't much of a tour of the actual propulsion system, even though the idea of the membrane is interesting. I was disappointed that I didn't get to see any of their outboard motor or propulsion systems in person. I'd watched the promotional finesse videos, and there were lots of shots of swans and scenic French waterways, but little on the membrane motor itself. I was so intrigued that I'd even tried to buy one as advertised, but the payment portal didn't work, which is why I ended up going to Metstrad. 
I asked if I could go to France and see a prototype, but they told me that there was no public viewings available for any of it. And not to try and knock them whilst they're down, but there are also claims floating around about a boat at the Olympics using one of their outboard motors. But when I asked about this, they said there was also a traditional boat motor and propeller to help out because it wasn't powerful enough on its own. And in a video on their YouTube, it looks like it's not even in the water. I mean, they did have a lot to contend with with the overflowing Seine River, but the jury's still out on this one. The idea is cool, and from all of the test footage, I have to assume there is a working version out there. I just would have loved to see it, or at least get some real data about it. There are millions of small boats out there, and I'm sure if there was a propulsion system without loud and potentially damaging rotating blades available, there would be demand for it. But let's not forget the real star of the show here, the jellyfish. Sea jellies might not look efficient, but they do win on the leaderboard of the animal kingdom's most efficient movers. I'm certain we could continue to learn from their simple movements and genius vortex optimization in many applications, helping move all types of objects more efficiently. Like many other forms of biomimetic engineering, this might be less of a direct replication of the biological system and more an inspiration on how we can use similar phenomenon. Something I would love to see is more data on both of these systems about how they compare in terms of tangible efficiency, how much power or energy are they using to move their systems. The other thing I do wonder about is with membranes being used so much, would there be issues with wear and tear? I think there almost definitely would be, but can it be replaced simply and cheaply enough to make it worth it? One thing is for certain though, the engineers that make these systems need the best tools available, which is why they should be using Onshape, who made this video possible. If you are an engineer, tinkerer, or part of a business looking for an incredible computer-aided design solution, then you need to check out Onshape a professional grade CAD and product data management system designed to revolutionize how you design and manage your products. Imagine secure real-time collaboration, multiple people working on the same design at once, no more crashes, no loss to data, and no need for an IT team. Onshape tracks every change automatically with infinite restore capabilities, and its branching and merging features, similar to Git, make merging complex designs effortless. Plus, it runs on any device, from computers to tablets, so you can work anywhere, anytime. For you viewers in the US, Onshape just launched Onshape Government, a version specifically tailored for companies needing regulatory compliance, like ITAR and EAR. And unlike traditional CAD software, Onshape is built entirely in the cloud, accessible directly from your browser, meaning no matter who you are, you can get set up in minutes. Sign up for Onshape today and get up to six months of the professional version for free at onshape.pro slash Xeroth.